Alright, everybody. We are coming back for chapter six of Undead Pets. Goldfish from Beyond the Grave. <clears throat> chapter six. It serves him right, said Fizz, sulkily. The man's a monster. You shouldn't have done it, whispered Joe. He thought it was me screwing around with the hose. If you cause too much trouble, I won't get to stay. Then I won't be able to find out your killer. They were talking in the bathroom, out of the way of the party guests. Are you sure you didn't recognize any of the children? Asked Joe. No, I told you. I didn't see who flushed me. Then how can I help you? That's your problem. There was a rattle on the door. Hurry up, Joe, called Matt. I'm bursting. Look, we've got to go. Remember, no more silly stuff, okay? Huh? Growled the fish as Joe flushed the toilet. As soon as he opened the door, Matt rushed in. Wait there for me. Then we'll go down and get a hot dog. Or maybe some barbecued fish, said Joe. I heard that, growled Fizz. Joe heard a shout. There he is. He turned to see the twins and the rest of their gang. Thundering up the stairs toward him. Joe, play with us now, Lily grinned. What? Um, no. Come and see my dollies, said Lolly, taking Joe's hand. The kids dragged and pushed him down the corridor into the twins' bedroom. Joe blinked at the bright pink wallpaper. The curtains were pink, too. So was the carpet. And the two little beads, beds, had matching pink bedspreads decorated with white stars. It's very, um, pink? Matt appeared in the doorway, chuckling. Hello, Matt, Lolly beamed. This is my new doll. Her name's Rose. Let's have a tea party. Joe felt his water bottle moving again. Fizz was back. But Joe had noticed something else. A book lying next to one of the beds. It had a smiling goldfish on the front cover. Little Bubbles, Big Adventure. He was about to pick it up and take a look when Lily suddenly grabbed his hand. Let's play hide and seek. What? Okay. That sounds slightly better than a doll's tea party. All right. Matt and I will count to 20, said Joe. You guys go hide. Ready? One. Two, three, four, five, six. He waited until all the children had disappeared out of the room. Then he stopped counting and collapsed on the bed. Wow, he said. I thought Toby was hard work. Matt smiled sheepishly. Yeah, they're a handful. You can see why Dan stays in his room a lot. Where is his room anyway? Down the hall. Can we go and see him? I'd love to get a look at his killer fish, said Joe. Huh? Muttered Fizz. Those guys couldn't kill a water flea. <laughs> Joe ignored Fizz and said to Matt, Come on, let's give it a try. Matt looked doubtful. He might not let us. Joe eventually persuaded Matt. They went to Dan's room and banged on the door. Go away, came the answer. Dan, it's me, Matt. Go away! Matt sighed. See? Tell him I want to see his fish, because I'm thinking of getting some. Matt shrugged. Hey, Dan, my friend Joe's here. He wants to see your fish tank. He's thinking of getting one of his own. There was a silence for a few seconds. Then the door opened a crack, and Dan peered out. He was tall with shaggy black hair and a grumpy expression. Are the twins with you? Matt shook his head. They think we're playing hide and seek with them, Joe grinned. They're hiding, but we're not seeking. Dan smiled and opened the door a bit more. Come in before they hear you. The room was dark. The curtains were pulled shut and the only lights were coming from a TV, which right now showed a video game on pause and a large illuminated fish tank. Wow, 
Joe breathed as he and Matt examined a detailed model of a spaceship. Matt reached out to pick it up. Don't touch anything, hissed Dan, pushing his long, stringy hair out of his eyes. Sorry, said Matt. There were more models dotted around the room, along with piles of video games. In the corner stood an electric guitar and a dusty yeah. black amp. The walls were covered with movie and music posters. Books and DVDs were piled on the bookcase. And a whole bunch of weird ornaments, a glowing skeleton, a green lava lamp, and a road sign saying, no exit were scattered around the shelves. Wow, said Joe, I really like your room. The fish tank stood in the corner, glowing like an alien sea world. Joe peered in. There were several small goldfish swimming around, as well as a guppy. Two water snails were stuck to the glass. On the bottom was a model of a shipwreck and a small skull blowing air bubbles from its mouth. Your tank is awesome, said Joe. Dan bent down and looked in, too. Yeah, the fish are cool. I used to have a goldfish called Fizz. I'd had him since I was nine, but he had gotten eaten. I didn't, growled Fizz, who had appeared inside the tank. He was floating around the place like a drill sergeant, carrying out an inspection. It was weird that he got killed. Dan continued. He was always the boss of the tank. I thought he was as tough as nails. I am, said Fizz hotly. He peered out of the tank at Dan's room. I liked it here, he added miserably. There was lots of stuff to look at. I used to watch TV with Dan gangster films, monster movies, Jaws. Hey, Dan, I told Joe. I tell Joe what happened to Fizz, said Matt. Well, I was away for a couple of days, camping with a friend. When I got home, Fizz was gone. One of the others had eaten him. Ridiculous, growled Fizz. Did you know which fish did it? asked Joe. I mean, which fish is the cannibal? Thud. Fizz banged his head against the glass in frustration. I keep telling you, they're not cannibals. Dan shrugged. Nope, I've been watching the tank, but I haven't seen anything. Tell him what really happened, Joe, yelling Fizz, pressing right up against the glass of the tank. Come on, now's your chance. But before Joe could say anything, there was a sudden hammering on the door. Matt? Joe? Where are you? The twins, Matt said, groaning. You'll have to go, said Dan. They're not allowed in here. But it was too late. Lolly and Lily burst in, followed by the others. We found you, squeaked Lolly. We've been hiding for ages. But you didn't know you didn't come and look for us, added Lily with a scowl. Everyone out, shouted Dan as Henry picked up one of his models. Hey, stop that, he yelled at Franklin, who was pulling the strings on his guitar. Meanwhile, Billy and Emma had moved over to the fish tank. Emma was pulling faces at the fish, while Billy banged on the glass to scare them. Joe looked at them both. Was one of them the killer? Joe could imagine Billy flushing a fish just for the fun of it. All of you, get out, Dan yelled as he headed for the door. Joe spotted a laptop on Dan's desk. There was a webcam on the top, which gave Joe an idea. All right, that's the end of the chapter. We'll catch up tomorrow, chapter nine. Bye. All right. <clears throat> Did you guys enjoy it? Uh-huh. Who said Mr. Ru oh, I said chapter nine. We're going to do chapter seven next time. I was a little messed up. All right.